Bank of America had a note out today is that the outflows from emerging markets, while overall for the year cumulatively are still higher, they have been intensifying in May as well as June. Of course, that coincides with the huge drawdown we've seen. So, Ali, where do you... Uh, do you like emerging markets? Are there opportunities in your view? Look, I think they're long-term opportunities, getting back to the volatility question, and this is where a lot of the volatility is. Um, we actually took our overweight down to neutral on Monday based on... How what? long were you overweight? We were overweight about two quarters, mm -hmm. but the issue for us became that it's the short-term issue that's going on with the dollar. The dollar <laughs> strength is making it a really hard trade right now. But in terms of, again, being in long term for clients, I can't ignore the demographics of the population growth in those countries and be in there long term. We're just being really thoughtful and careful about how we do it. So, so everybody in the desk, I think, yeah, not today, said when I said I'm worried about the dollar and emerging markets, said no, 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 it doesn't trade on, you know, on the U.S. dollar. It's not dollar denominated debt anymore. That's bull, and we see that now. And, and I agreed with you at the time, by yeah. the way. And, and, yeah. and you were the only one. I understand. Uh, I wasn't here. From afar, Michael Farr. Right. But anyway, and, you know. And anything else you were right about, I agreed with that. Exactly, exactly. That's so you spent a lot of time right agreeing with you. I mean, a lot of time. That could be like Get a whole what job. I do today, Steve yeah. Weiss. Yeah. So, so today, I don't think you go in, because yeah. these are pure momentum trades. They're very illiquid markets, very thin. And I just don't see the value there, and they're impossible to analyze a lot of them. What worries me is that there was a time when people were looking for all sorts of yield, whether it be stock market yield or yield on bonds, and people were rushing into emerging markets. Everybody was going to on the emerging debt side, on the yeah. equity side, really, yeah. right? Funny how, that, now, funny how that turns out when, when a fad can't be big happens enough. like that. Um, look, the one thing I'll say about emerging markets, and I will acknowledge I'm a U.S. Uh, investor, but, you know, I do advise clients about how to invest in this space. And the answer is you have to have an active manager. I don't yeah. like the ETFs for this because the ETFs, by their mandate, have to have exposure to countries that may be going through serious turmoil. Brazil was mentioned. You know, there's obviously been political turmoil there for many years. Russia has had similar issues. You want a manager who's actively going to sidestep those issues as they come up. So you need to do that in the ground. ETF. So, so, so if I'm, if I'm person person at home and everybody yeah. watching, not everybody, a lot of people are people at home who are watching, sure. and I'm thinking, oh, I could do it myself with an ETF. I get, there's EEM, there's EWZ, there's well, you can, you can, you you can use the country specific ETFs, but I do think you want an expert manager, as Steve just said, somebody boots on the ground. Wouldn't you rather just have an individual name, though? I mean, I, I, everybody always loves to go into this whole thing about the emergency. Oh, I want to be in Brazil, I want to be in this. Do you really? Or do you want to be in the individual names that you have work on a better it, understanding of? That's the way to pick it. I be in individual names and be a Right, 100% with you. I have to disagree with you. I absolutely have to disagree with you. Average person at home doesn't need to be in emerging markets at all. I mean, is there it, anything better than a good old U.S. of that? It, well, it, you, if the, they're, no, they're just, you, you don't need the risk, you don't need the complexity if you have the big mega cap stocks that are trading a, 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 in multinational mega corporations with solid balance sheets and earnings, you're going to get plenty are you of thinking diversification. Of, are you think of a company in particular? Around the world, Google. Uh, would be a company that's trading around the world. Johnson & Johnson's a company that trades around the world. I mean, I think there are a couple, lots of Pepsi-Cola, which a lot of people don't like right now, and I continue to like only because it's a little bit out of favor and it tends to be very solid. How about an international company listed here in the United States? Like Ababa? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's plenty of different names. You can go to the individual names to get the exposure that you want. But I'd rather be in those individual names than be in the big ETFs. I don't want to get dragged down because the financials in China are going down, and meanwhile, Bob is executing at the right but, way. But, here, but here's the real message from EM, and that's what China's doing. They're preparing for a trade war. And when yeah. you see the yuan, the average emerging market currency that's corrected has been 32%. I don't know that China's going to do that, but that would be disastrous if they did it, right? But they're clearly preparing for a trade war with the banks, and with debt and with devaluing the yuan, the, the yuan, even though they say they're not doing it. All right. If I were Last an individual, word, uh, thanks. If I were an individual investor, the way that we're doing this for clients is threefold. You either do a structured note where you take one of these indices, but you you basically price in the volatility and you use that for protection. That's one way. Second way would be a separately managed account where you have someone on the ground that is picking those winners and losers in these trades. And the third is do it through private equity where you have the discipline psychologically to stay in. You're not looking at daily mark to market, but you have someone investing on really long term trends there.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.